everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and today I have a new pop-up video tutorial to share. But first I wanted to announce the winner of our product showcase video and the winner is Jam0206. Congratulations, you won a $50 Scrappy Tales gift card. Again, I always thank everyone that leaves comments, especially on those product showcase videos. My mom and I spend several weeks preparing for that video and a lot of love and time goes into them and all of your comments and likes really help boost the videos in the algorithm and get them shown to other people. So I really appreciate it. And if you're new to Scrappy Tales, we do a product showcase video for every new collection and in every video I give away a $50 gift card. So definitely watch out for those. I also have an Instagram hop happening and I'm giving away two $25 gift cards. So if you want to check out that hop, I will have my Instagram listed down below. There's some great inspiration featuring this new collection by the Scrappy Tales design team. And today, I'm going to be creating some more pop-up trellis cards using our new A7 Spring Scene Builder pop-up die set. You can see I went ahead and doubled up two trellises to make them sturdy. I glued them onto vellum and then I just cut around the trellis so that those holes that are cut have some vellum peeking behind and it just looks really nice. The pop-up die includes this fence that has some score lines on it. I just reinforced those score lines and that kind of creates a box shape. I'm going to add some double-sided tape to each of the glue tabs and then these are going to be glued behind the trellis. So I'll go ahead and remove the backing on each end and then I'm going to line up the right glue tab to the right side of the trellis lining up those bottom edges and I like to glue the tab behind the trellis but you can also glue the tab in front if you accidentally put your double-sided tape on the front of the glue tab as opposed to the back it really doesn't matter it's going to fold the same way but you can see I took the other end and just glued it behind the left side of the trellis and that is it that creates the entire scene there's also a grass piece with the same score lines that you can wrap around the fence but for this card i'm going to be using the bushes from our new buddy and kids die set i'm going to be featuring both of the new easter children sets one of them has two, two kids each holding a bunny and then the other set has two kids that are egg hunting here I am gluing the decorative side panels on the trellis and I did die cut both the trellis and the fence from heavyweight white cardstock just so that it's a nice substantial card. I also die cut the bridges from the pop-up die set from heavyweight green cardstock. I opted for green because my bushes are green so I figured if there's any part of the bridge showing in the card at least it kind of blends in. And then this beautiful Happy Easter banner comes from the lamb add-on. I die cut the text twice from heavyweight white cardstock and then on top I'm going to add a green layer. I also die cut that banner from some blue cardstock and I'm just going to paper piece or cut apart the happy and the Easter and glue that onto my green banner just so that it's a different color. I wanted the main part to be green because there are some flower stems and leaves. So this ends up being quite dimensional. There are some tiny little flowers also on the banner and I cut those from yellow and pink cardstock. It even includes the shadow layer which I die cut from a light gray and that's just going to help it stand out against the trellis. I love this banner because it is meant to coordinate with the A7 pop-up pumpkin die set so you can add this to the top of the pumpkins on any of the new characters but it also just looks great on other pop-ups and 
unintentionally the arch on the banner matches perfectly with the arch on the trellis so it almost looks like it was meant for this pop-up die set all right so here i'm adding the yellow flowers and this just ends up being a really nice sentiment So here it is fully completed, nice and dimensional. And here you can see when I add it to the top, it just fits perfectly. So I'm starting my first card using the Bunny Kids die set. And you can see on our new packaging, there is a final image on the bottom part of the L flap. And also that same image enlarged on the back side of the packaging. And it gives you not only a reference on how to paper piece our new dies but also there's really great colors you can go off of so I am paper piecing both the boy and the girl in the exact same colors that were shown on the packaging because it looks good and it's meant to be there for inspiration and you can definitely copy if you want so I cut her dress from blue her hat from yellow and then her dress accents will be yellow and white, and then I'm giving her a little white bunny to hold. The base I cut from a skin tone color. And this is a fairly small image, and there are quite a few layers to this. But I just love seeing especially characters come to life when you start adding all those small details. And if you enjoyed our Carolers die set that we brought out a few years ago for Christmas, I think you'll really like these two sets that I'm featuring today. They're drawn in the same style. They're a little bit larger. And they just fill in the scene perfectly. One of our design team members, Estelle, put this little girl on the swing of our new spring tree die set. And at first, I was actually debating on doing that for one of my cards, and I thought she was too big, but she actually is not. The card she made turned out beautiful. So if I can find that, I will link it. She might not have posted it yet, though, because my team members have scheduled days, and sometimes they work ahead. But when it is posted, I will show it on the Scrappy Tales Instagram. All right, so now I'm moving on to the boy. And this time the base is the bunny. So I wanted my bunny to be brown. So I cut the base from craft cardstock. And now I'm just paper piecing all of the details in the clothing on the boy, including his little face that I cut from the same cream cardstock as I did for the girl. And then the bunny just has a couple little detail pieces that I die cut from a lighter brown cardstock. The boy definitely has less layers. But I find when it comes to characters, there's not a lot of men or boys that are represented. So this is really great if you have young kids or grandkids that might be doing an Easter egg hunt this year. If you're hosting an egg hunt, these would make perfect little Easter party favors. So here is the completed boy. I am taking a fine liner and just going over the engraved lines that are on the faces just so that they stand out a bit more. I did that on the bunny and on the kid faces. And then the die set also includes these bushes, which look a little bit strange, but when you add flowers to these, which are also in the die, they end up just looking like gorgeous, dainty background bushes. And it adds a lot of nice detail to these cards, and they don't take very long because the flowers in the die set cut out like 10 flowers at once. So I didn't have to cut very many of them to fill these bushes. I am using the tip of my glue needle to pick up these small flowers and I'm just going to show you me adding the flowers to one of these bushes but I did the same for the larger bush. And I love that all the flowers are a different size so it really looks organic. 
Then from the lamb add-on where that banner came from, I am paper piecing some butterflies. I die, I die cut the wings from yellow and then the butterfly bodies from white. And then here are my bridges. Again, cut from heavyweight green cardstock. Before I add the bridges in, I'm just going to decorate the front. This is normally where you would add the grass, but I thought it'd be fun instead to do the bushes this time. And also, in my last video where I feature this die set, I added grass to the bridges, but this time I'm going to add the bushes. These ones do not have any flowers on them. You're not going to see a lot of this by the time you add all the kids and the small details, but these bridges add all the dimension inside the pop-up, which is really pretty, and it's going to give me an area to glue my characters. All right, so you can see the very bottom of the bridge shows a little bit, but you won't really end up seeing it because I'm going to tuck it pretty far down. And I'm gluing this bridge to the second fence panel. So it is fairly close to the front of the card and it's a little bit higher up. So I'm adding double-sided tape to those glue tabs. I will also add regular glue so that I can move this around. Here I'm lining it up and you can see that those glue tabs are hidden by the fence panels. I am going to add one more bridge with my flower bush. So here I'm just kind of seeing what that's going to look like. I'm going to again layer the two bushes together because why not? I had an extra piece here and then the bush on the top will be the one with the flowers. Or maybe I just add this one bush, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I just add the one flower bush. And then this is going to go on the second to last fence panel pretty high up just so that you can see it peeking over the bridge we just added before. And then I'm going to glue this last part of the bush in the very back directly on the trellis. And as you can see those flowers really add a lot to the scene. I'm going to go ahead and glue that banner to the top of the trellis and then now I can fill the scene with my characters and my butterflies. I'm going to add the boy directly to the front of the fence line. And I just think these images are so sweet. And then the girl's going to go right in the middle just sitting on that bush. have another small scrap of bush I thought about adding to the back but decided against it. I will add one butterfly to the fence and I think two butterflies to the trellis just to fill in that blank area above the girl. And then that pretty much completes this first card. When it folds flat it fits inside an A7 envelope. I will show you how this card folds flat. Like so. And then it just stands upright and makes honestly a really great home decor piece if your recipient keeps your cards. So here it is flattened. And now we're moving on to the second design. This one features the Egg Hunt Kids. I love this set because you get this awesome egg hunt banner that you can use by itself. I know Desiree, another Scrappy Tales design team member, she used this and created a scene with our bunny silhouettes. And she had this sign in the background, which was really cute. I did double up the banner because it is quite dainty. It's really only going to be glued on those two very skinny wood posts. 
and I did not add an acrylic stick behind this because it was nice and sturdy it was able to hold itself up so I definitely suggest always cutting your pop-up bases from heavyweight cardstock and also any sort of dainty layer I cut the word egg hunt twice from heavyweight white cardstock. I also die cut the flag banner. You're not going to see much of the white showing through, really just the string of the banner, because I die cut all of the flags from various pastel colors. You can see in my pile of die cuts, several of the super small detail pieces are stuck inside the little squares that I cut before running them through my die cut machine. This just helps so that I don't lose anything. And it's also nice because I can easily spot those small pieces and not have to scour to find them on my glass mat. All right, so there is the sign completed. I think that's so cute. I could actually die cut multiple flag banners and really fill the scene with those. I think that'd be cute along the fence line of the pop-up, but I didn't think of that at the time. Here is the girl from the Egg Hunt Kids die set. She again is wearing a really cute dress and I am following the color scheme that is on the packaging. I'm giving her a pink dress and then white accents. I die cut her from the same cream cardstock as my last two kids. And she is bending over to pick up some flowers, which is really cute. And then the boy in this set has a basket full of eggs. I love that these particular characters are kind of drawn in action. I had a very fun time illustrating these sets. I am opting to add every single detail that the die provides, but you really don't have to. You can see I'm adding the lace to the sleeves and the bottom of the dress. Honestly, you could probably get away without doing that. But like I said, my favorite part of card making is seeing my die cuts kind of come to life with all the small details. Paper piecing is one of my favorite techniques, so I don't mind those fiddly parts and we're kind of known for these intricate layering dies we do offer a few that aren't quite as small and don't have quite as many layers but these are my personal favorite all right so i die cut the flower from green and the petals are a separate die so i cut those from yellow And then I'm going to give her some pink shoes. And then I'll take my fine liner and again go over those engraved lines that are on her face just so that they stand out a little bit more. And then I'll go ahead and paper piece the boy again using the back of the packaging as reference. If you haven't seen my showcase video, I do show all of the new packaging over there. And I highly encourage you guys to check that out. I like at, when I'm doing these videos that use a ton of different products. I like inserting photos. It's just easier for me. And also you guys can see exactly what I'm using as I am, you know, progressing the video. But the new packaging is really nice. All of the dies are detabbed. And the actual outlines of the dies are printed on the backer cards so when you remove them from the packaging you know exactly where everything goes back and you don't have to worry about overcrowding the backer card and you can also see if you've accidentally thrown away some of these smaller dies which i do all the time that is probably something that happens at least once every collection I bring out, I 
always end up swiping my die cut machine, not realizing that there could be a still a small die still on the die cut plates. So it's nice. And I noticed it with the new packaging when I was going back to put everything back on the sheet. I was like, well, I'm missing one of these dies and I had to go through the trash and find it. <laughs> All right, so my two kids are done and I have my banner. I love the colors. And I have two fences. This time I'm going to change it up. You can see I die cut two fences and that is because I'm going to convert this into an A2 card. I'm going to start by cutting the fence into three parts. I am following the score lines that are already on the die, but I am leaving the bottom part of the fence line. You can see on the left and right piece that I have here, there's a tiny tab at the bottom that I left. That way I can glue my grass and create the front of my card. It'll make more sense when I start putting this together. I'm actually going to use those tabs as glue tabs. So I'm adding some double-sided tape to those, very strong tape here by Uline. And then I'm going to take a grass piece and again, I'm cutting at each of the score lines and I'm going to take the center part and glue that in between those two glue tabs. So now I have one long piece with grass in the center. I'm gonna add another layer of grass because I want this to be a little bit more sturdy. And I just added glue behind that light green grass and I'm gonna glue the dark green one behind. And then all we have to do is close the back. So I have another fence that I die cut. And this time, I'm again following those score lines and cutting this up into three pieces. This time I just want that center piece of the fence to close the back. And then you can see we can use those glue tabs on the left and right fence pieces to wrap around the back part of the fence that we just cut, just like we glue the glue tabs to the back of the trellis. So there's a little bit of paper surgery you have to do to accomplish the A2 look, but I like that the score lines are there for you to easily cut it up and do this design. It didn't take long at all. And everything is pre-measured. So when this is flat, I believe it is four and a quarter wide. So you can make it five and a half inches tall if you're mailing this into an A2 card. So I'm gonna go ahead, flatten that, make sure that the glue is nicely adhered and that creates the base. And I just think it's really cute and dainty and then you can attach your bridges inside the exact same way. They just line up with the fence panels perfectly. Just like my last card, I'm going to add some bushes to the bridges. And then I will glue this on the second fence panel right above the grass that's on the front of the base. Again, using strong double-sided tape for this and then I'll use glue so that I can wiggle this around and get it right where I want it. And then to ensure that those bridges are nicely stuck down, I do like to fold it a couple times. Here I'm just seeing what that sign looks like. Again, be mindful to not exceed five and a half inches tall when you glue that in. For my second bridge, I'm going to use grass. adding my double-sided tape to the glue tabs. And then this one I'm going to glue slightly higher than the bridge in front. And I think I glue it to the second to last panel on the fence line. And then I can start to build my scene. So as the name of the die set implies, it really is meant to start a spring scene that you can build off of. I think that this is such a versatile set and I love that the fence and the grass, if you leave it as one piece, it is slimline size so you can use it on flat cards. There's just a lot of versatility with this one and I plan on making more pop-ups like this that sort of start a scene for you. 
But you can see I went ahead, added the egg hunt banner to the last bridge in the back. And then I'm going to glue the boy to the first bridge. And then I'll glue the girl directly to the front of the card. I love those little white flowers on the bushes that are peeking through the kids. I'm going to add a little bush to the left side of the girl. And then, of course, an egg hunt wouldn't be complete without some eggs. So I die cut eggs from the same pastel colors that are on the flags. And I'm just going to scatter some eggs in the grass. I'm also going to add some grass to the side of the pop-up and tuck in some more eggs. I end up swapping the boy's egg that he's holding with a yellow one. It's just those things that don't matter, but to me matter. <laughs> All right, so now we can start filling with some more eggs here. And this is such a simple scene, but all of that time went towards adding the detail to the character's clothing and everything. So believe it or not, this card took just as long as the first card did. But it's still a little bit more simple. There's not quite as much happening, which I like. So the die also includes all these little eggs. And there's several sizes, and you cut several of them at once, which is nice. So here I'm adding more grass. I had all of these pieces left over because I cut them apart. I figured I might as well use them. So I'll do the double layer. This is also adding a lot of stability to the card, which is nice. And if you want to add a message, you can handwrite something on a regular rectangle and glue that to the back. And I think that would be really cute. You can also stamp a sentiment back there. And here is how this card folds flat. I'm going to add a couple eggs to the side, just add a pop of color. You can also add grass to the back if you want to go all the way around. And then that finishes off my second card design. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I do have one more video featuring this trellis using our new bunny dies, which are adorable. So that will be posted sometime next week. I also have a video featuring our new add-ons for the pop-up pumpkin. And I still have to film and post the 10 card one kit video, which I do have to say the card kit is selling very fast. So I'm not even sure there will be any kits left by the time the video goes up, but I still want to post a video for those that got the kit and need some inspiration. So here's the card folded flat and here I'll bring in the first card that I made. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I think these turned out really stinking cute. So thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And as always, I will have everything that I use linked down in the description. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye.